Hi there, and welcome to Physically Debunked. Here on this channel, I analyse misrepresentations, misinterpretations, and misuses of modern science. That was a lot of ends, especially in arguments concerning the existence of God. In the last video, I took aim at a version of the cosmological argument. Today, I'm going to be focusing on a theorem that is commonly and <clears throat> wrongly interpreted as proving the second premise of that argument, that the universe had an absolute beginning. If you've watched debates involving apologists like William Lane Craig, then you may have noticed this term pop up. The ball goof Vilenkin theorem, or BGV theorem for short. I think it's fair to say that some apologists are obsessed with this theorem, seemingly convinced that it serves as scientific proof that the universe had an absolute beginning. The, the BGV theorem says that any universe that on a whole um, is expanding had to have an actual beginning. I believe that the Borden for Lincoln Guth proof from space time geometry stands as very probative evidence, very probative scientific evidence for an absolute beginning of time and physical reality. Does the BGV theorem prove that the universe had an absolute beginning? Let's take a closer look. First of all, a little bit of context. The BGV theorem appeared in a paper titled Inflationary Space Times Are Not Past Complete, which was written by three eminent cosmologists, Marvin Bord, Alan Guth, and Alexander Vilenkin. In particular, you may well have heard of Alan Guth, who is credited with first proposing the model of inflation. To put it short, these are big physicists. The paper was published in 2003, and it's really quite short, only a few pages long, and it presents a proof of what is now known as the BGB theorem. If you're a cosmologist, the title of the paper gives more than a subtle hint as to what the theorem is about. On the other hand, if like most people, you're not a cosmologist, then the hint probably is subtle. I guess that the kind of thing that goes through people's minds when they see this title is inflationary space times is the same thing as our universe, and not past complete is the same thing as must have had a beginning. So inflationary space times are not past complete is the universe had a beginning. A valuable lesson to learn from this is that although translating the title of a scientific paper into everyday language can convey a flavor of what the paper is about, scientific language doesn't translate 100% accurately into everyday language. It's just not precise enough. To understand what exactly the BGV theorem is saying, we need to look deeper at the contents of this paper. The BGV theorem can be accurately summarized as follows. A universe that has on average been expanding throughout its history must be past incomplete. Now it's beyond reasonable doubt at this point that our universe has been expanding for all of its observable history. This is basically what the Big Bang Theory says and it's supported by mountains of evidence. We have the existence of the cosmic microwave background, redshift of galaxies moving away from us, and excellent agreements with the observed quantities of chemical elements. This strongly suggests that this theorem does apply to our universe. What this implies then is that our universe must be past incomplete. But what do we mean by that? In general relativity and cosmology, it's often useful to think in terms of world lines. The world line of an observer is simply the path that observer traces out as they move through space time. Here we have an observer who's just sitting still in space, that means their world line is a straight line in space-time. On the other hand, this observer is moving around a bit, so their world line is curving around. Back on topic, what we mean by past incompleteness in the BGV theorem is that at some point in the finite past, if we were to trace back the world line of any observer, we'd end up at a kind of boundary which we can't extend the world line beyond. In other words, we can't extend world lines infinitely far back in the past. At some point, they can't be continued. That they can't be continued is what we call past incompleteness. This sounds exactly like a beginning, right? Well, not so fast. The BGV theorem establishes that at some point in the past, we do reach this space-time boundary, but that doesn't mean there's full stop nothing beyond it. In fact, the authors describe the chief result of their paper as this. Inflation alone is not sufficient to provide a complete description of the universe, and some new physics is necessary in order to determine the correct conditions at the boundary. There's no mention of a beginning at all here. In fact, what the author seems to be suggesting is not that they've proven the existence of a beginning, but that their result shows we need new physics to understand what happens when we reach the BGV boundary. What this really comes down to is a need for a quantum theory of gravity unlike general relativity, which is a classical theory of gravity and space-time. Let's break this down a bit. The difference between classical things and quantum things in physics can be explained in terms of an everyday liquid like water. When you see water in a pond or in a bath, it's all smooth and continuous. It moves in a flowy way as we expect it to, and if you squint closely at it, it doesn't look like it's made up of anything smaller. When we say classical space-time, this is what we're referring to. Classical space-times are smooth and continuous, 
and don't look like they're made up of anything smaller. If we were to zoom in on some water with very high magnification, however, then you'd see something very different. You'd see that water isn't continuous at all. It's made up of lumps, little molecules, H2O. These molecules don't behave like water does at all. They don't flow neatly, they bump around each other, and they're attracted and repelled by electromagnetic forces. In a quantum theory of space-time, we expect that on very small scales, space-time won't look continuous anymore. It will look lumpy and behave very differently on this microscopic level to how it does classically. What the BGV theorem is saying then is not that this boundary is the absolute beginning of the universe, but it shows that at some point we need to take into account the quantum behaviour of gravity. In fact, the proof of the BGV theorem itself relies on space-time being classical. So when we do get close to the space-time boundary, and our approximation of space-time behaving classically breaks down, the BGV theorem no longer applies. The BGV theorem is great for telling us that at some point in our universe's past, classical space-time is going to break down, but that's all it really tells us about our universe. There's simply nothing about the BGV theorem that implies that this boundary would be the absolute beginning of all reality. An additional problem with the claim that the BGV theorem proves there's a beginning to reality is the fact that it's actually fairly easy to get around its assumption that our universe is on average expanding throughout its history. If we postulate that there's a contracting phase our universe went through before the Big Bang, then we can easily construct a universe which isn't on average expanding throughout its history. This is an easy way out of the theorem, and there are plenty of hypothetical cosmological models that propose exactly this. There are plenty of interesting discussions about what the BGV theorem does imply for these alternative cosmological models, but it's pretty safe to say that the BGV theorem alone doesn't prove that reality had an absolute beginning. Its assumptions break down as we get towards the boundary, and it's not necessarily true that our universe has always on average been expanding, which would avoid the theorem entirely. Perhaps, however, you think I'm being overly pedantic here. Even if the BGV theorem doesn't establish the existence of an absolute beginning, surely all we know about cosmology suggests with strong likelihood that our universe began to exist in a Big Bang singularity. This is what all academic cosmologists say the evidence supports, isn't it? Well, I and many other cosmologists don't agree. To say that physical reality as a whole began to exist at the Big Bang singularity is just as speculative as alternative ideas like oscillating universes going through big bangs and big crunches or eternally inflating multiverses. The Big Bang Theory is wrongly interpreted as suggesting that physical reality definitely began 13.7 billion years ago. All it really says is that 13.7 billion years ago, our physical laws as we know them break down. That's all. Once our physical laws break down, it's anyone's guess as to what happens next. But the point is, an absolute beginning is just as speculative as any other theory at this point in time. So when I say that this theorem hasn't proved the universe began to exist at the Big Bang, it's not just semantics. We honestly have no idea what happens at or possibly even before the Big Bang singularity. And I think that mystery is fascinating. Isn't it great that we don't know what may lie beyond our universe? My personal opinion is that there's a lot more beyond our universe that we haven't discovered. And I find that an incredibly exciting thought. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Don't let anyone fool you when they say that they definitely know the universe began to exist. <laughs>